Hello, good morning, good morning, good day, good evening, wherever you're at. Hello, thank you for being here. I'm Melissa Cantu, and it's actually been a while since I've actually released a video. So here I am today wanting to talk about how I made six figures with no degree. So stay tuned to the end. You don't want to miss. If you haven't yet, be sure to hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and let's get started. So this week we're actually on spring break in our RV in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So I'm really excited, really bright. <laughs> Eyes are very sensitive, so it won't be out here for long, but just wanted to kind of capture some of the beautiful scenery. So going back to the topic at hand, which is how I made six figures with no degree. Um, it started when I was 12 years old and my aunt had taken me to bring your child to, to work day. <laughs> she had boys and they weren't interested. So she brought me and she had at the time been working at Texas Instruments and she too had not had a degree and had this pretty successful career at Texas Instruments. And I remember thinking, wow, I, this is something I want to do one day. So that actually sparked at 12 years old, the interest of wanting to work in corporate America. I wanted to work in an office. I wanted to be surrounded with other people who were smart. And um, from the age of 13, I started working. Um, and then at 16, unfortunately, well, I can't say unfortunately, but I'd become pregnant. So for many teenagers, that could be the end, you know, and I'll be honest, I started to think the same. I started to think like, this is going to be my life. This is all, you know, I'm going to be a mother and I'm not going to have a really good job. I'm not going to be able to go to school. And that was far from the truth. Um, it actually, if anything, motivated me even more. And so at 16, um, you know, I started to create this plan uh, of what I wanted to do, how I wanted to be. Um, and then at 17, um, I took just a few months off and then I started to um, look for work. And that's where I ended up in a dentist's office. And I worked there for about a year and I really loved it. I love the whole aspect. I learned the front office, the back office. And um, unfortunately I had been laid off. The dentist was moving to a further, well, I can't say I was laid off. Um, the dentist was actually based in a city that was kind of far from me and she was relocating to even further. And so I wasn't able to go. Um, but what I did was I started to look for other jobs. And I came across this doctor, this dentist, that was looking for an office manager. And I really didn't have a lot of experience. I was 18, <laughs> didn't have a lot of experience, but was very confident that I could do it. So I go in, I apply, and I get interviewed. And they said, well, you don't really have any experience, um, but tell me a little bit about what you're looking to do. And so, so I go to the dentist, have the interview, and I convinced them that I can do this job. So they um, had me start managing one office and I did phenomenal. And then they decided to open a second branch and bring me on to, to manage that as well. By 19, I was managing two dental offices. And at the time I was making $15 an hour for a 19 year old high school dropout, GED, that's pretty damn good money. And I decided that I needed to go to school because I felt like it was something that in my mind I needed to have in order to make more money. So I enrolled in school, started doing part time, still was working and then 9-11 happened and I was laid off. The next day everybody in the office was laid off which was pretty sketch. Um, <laughs> don't know what happened to the dentist. They completely shut the offices, but everybody was laid off. I went into the staffing company, I interviewed, and I couldn't help but to think, I want to do what they are doing one day. I love the aspect of sitting across someone, asking questions, getting to know about them. And so I asked, I said, how can I do what you do? And the lady told me, well, you either have to have a degree or experience. So not having either experience or an education or a degree, should I say, I had put it in the back of the mind that I wanted to do something like that. So there were a few things that started happening. One, when I was 12, I had already manifested and I had already known that I wanted to work in an office. At 16, not only did I become pregnant, but I also read Celestine Prophecy, which was kind of like the beginning of where my interest in spirituality had begun. But I had always known that if you ask, you believe, you receive it. I don't know where it came from. Maybe it was the Celestine prophecy, but I was a very big proponent of 
knowing what you want and just going after it. So for a few years, you know, I continued to do administrative business office type work. Um, and all I knew was that by 30, I better be making 36 figures. So, um, fast forward now I'm about 21, 22. Um, I go to interview for an executive admin position. And when I get interviewed, the guy goes, have you ever thought about recruiting? And I was like, uh, yeah, like, hello, like at 19, <laughs> that is exactly what I wanted to do. And so he hired me. He loved my enthusiasm, he loved that I was a go getter. Um, I've always been very goal oriented. And the fact of the matter is I was very excited, um, which in recruiting, you kind of have to be, you're the face, you're the gatekeeper. Um, for candidates. And um, so uh, I did that for a few years. And by the time that I was 24, I was already making $75,000. So I'm almost there, right? So I keep trucking along. Um, a few years go by, I get into technology. And that is where I think my career had really taken a turn because it went from me being just in recruiting to now me being in technology, recruiting and, and doing more talent acquisition, career succession planning. And so I did it by 30. I had made six figures. And although I felt like that was the pinnacle of my career, there was yet more to come. Um, but what I will say is that making six figures just sets a bar for yourself. So when you set a bar for yourself, then you understand what your worth is. When you understand what your worth is, then you can only ask what you're worth. So, you know, by 35, I was making $75, 65, $75 an hour. Um, you know, and, and I ended up getting recruited, um, into IBM. So I worked for IBM for about five and a half years. And while I was there I actually was recruited out from Amazon. Again, here I am, no degree. I'm a teen mom and my experience, although it's very relevant, you know, I, I now knowing and looking back, I was working at Amazon. I ended up getting the job, but I worked with some of the smartest people. And what I loved was, you know, it was a whole manifestation because what happened was when I went to go interview with Amazon, I kept saying, I can't wait to work for Amazon. I can't wait to walk around in Seattle. I can't wait to, and everybody I met, I always would say, I can't wait to work with you. I, you know, and I would say, so what would you, you know, what, what do you think I'm going to do when I get here? You know? And so I kept in my mind having this in the present already happening. Um, and I was really excited. I got through four interviews and they offered me the job and I worked there for almost a year. Let me tell you, that was where it started to, so that's where everything changed. I loved working for a company like Amazon who in their technology career doesn't want to work for a company like Amazon, but it really was grinding me out. It was churn and burn. The culture was not what I wanted. Um, so there were a lot of factors, but I think what really was starting to happen is in 2017, I started to go through my spiritual awakening and I started to understand that there was more in life than just this career. I had been a working woman. I knew that I wanted to, you know, hit these goals and I had, and at this point I'm thinking, this is the pinnacle of my degree, like, or my degree, my experience, my, my career, like, how can I not be happy and excited and thrilled? And every time I traveled, it was just like, it just was something I dreaded and I, I hated that. And so, um, I ended up getting laid off. Um, they had, it was right when, um, 2016 Trump was elected. So, um, there was a lot of changes company coming. Technology had changes direction, had changed directions. I was doing international recruiting. And so they changed efforts. They needed to move everybody to Vancouver. So any recruiters who were doing what I was doing, which was event recruiting, um, for computer science engineers, they wanted based out of Vancouver. So what ended up happening was I decided to not continue. I could not relocate. And so in 2017 of April, 2017, I was laid off shortly after Mark was laid off. My dad had had a heart attack. There were so many things that were aligning. There were a lot of things that were aligning and some of them were very unforeseen and very difficult challenges. We decided that in the summer we were going to take 10 days and we hit the road and we went to Disney World where we really recharged, but it redirected us and it really made things into um, perspective. We took things and realized that, you know, what we really wanted in our careers and what we um, 
thought that we wanted were very different. And so we redirected, we changed course, we um, really did our um, goal planning. And so, uh, you know, it was really interesting because earlier in 2017, I had done a vision board. And in this vision board, there were a few things. One of them was Amazon with a big X happened. Um, and the other was Costa Rica. I knew I wanted to go to Costa Rica. Oh, and the other thing was there was two Disney, there was um, Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. So I knew those were all things that in 2017, I wanted to happen. And so um, the other thing was definitely Costa Rica. And um, in August, Mark was offered a job. And in October, they were doing a company trip where they took every employee, yes, every employee, and their significant other, you did have to be married um, to Costa Rica. So we did. It, we ended up going to Costa Rica. Um, but it was like those things that were happening. And I can't help but to think, and this is something that my husband and I are very big believers in, is knowing what you want and really believing in it. And I've said this already earlier in the video, but it's that manifestation. It's like knowing what you want. The universe will deliver, but you have to be very clear and you have to know what you want. And so for my goal, this coming up in the next few years is I now want to make a million dollars and I know I will. Now I want to, I will make a million dollars. My goal was to do it by 40. So I'm fast approaching, <laughs> but, um, you know, one of the things that just even looking back, you know, um, in the 20 years that I've been working full time, um, you know, it's, it's really interesting just to kind of see the progression. But what I really would say in going back to the ability of making six figures is why knowing what my worth is, Two, believing what my worth is. And three, demanding my worth. Because it is. So, whether you have a service based business, product business, or you're just an employee looking to change jobs, know that you have a minimum of expectations. Know that you are worth at least X amount. And for me, I knew that I was worth at least $65 an hour. So, um, you know, I up until 2019 had been working um, in technology and I got just that. I was laid off in October of 2019, which was for me divine timing. I had just completed my yoga teacher training. I knew that I wasn't going to be a yoga teacher full time. That was not my ambition. I knew I needed it for one, my toolkit and two, to deepen my practice in yoga. Um, but it all shifted and for the first time in over 20 years, I was able to have the full holiday season off and it was amazing. But you know, the funny thing is, is that back even when in my recruiting days, what I really loved and what I knew that I wanted and a lot of what I did was that career succession planning, the talent acquisition and really help mentoring and coaching is I knew I wanted to be a coach and having 16 years in, in talent acquisition, I thought I was going to be your career coach. So in March, in January, I enroll in a life coaching certification program. I complete it in March. I'm ready to hit the world, uh, ready to put my services out there and the pandemic hits. And for many, it could have been a very discouraging time starting a business. But for me, I used it as a time to pivot because what ended up happening was I started to not focus so much on careers, but the foundation of every one of us. And those are the things that we do every day in our lives. Those are the things that we believe in um, and the things that we really want in our lives um, start at the foundation. So whether you're in a career, whether you're in a business, whether you're an entrepreneur or a stay at home, just know that, um, you know, there, there's a foundation to us all and it all looks the same. So that is where I definitely spent the next nine months pivoting and, and, uh, really like learning more about mindset. I knew a lot about manifestation, but the tools and tips and tricks, because everything I have done has just been intuitive. It's just been part of what I've just have felt, which is that intuition, right? And so, you know, for the next two years and, you know, fast forward to today, you know, there are still things that are coming into fruition that I have manifested, including this, where I'm at is the RV. The RV was sent in, in 2021. At the beginning, we had, uh, we do goal planning every beginning of the year, and then we do check-ins every month. And there's a lot of planning that we do, a lot of dreaming, um, but a lot of it is stuff we really want. And so um, the RV was something that was going to help us really hit the road with our family, um, deepen our bond and really allow us to do more of what we want to do. And so here we are, you know, and things are still coming 
to life. And so, you know, if you're here and you've made it this far, I want to thank you. Um, you know, for me, making six figures was definitely a marker in my career, but it is for me not the only thing that was important. It was just something that I have and had continued to coach people to know, right? And, and that's all worth. Right. For me, you know, I do multiple things. I'm a coach by day, at night, and weekends. I do energy alchemy, which is yoga, meditation, sound baths, um, anything that's um, event-based, workshops, classes, retreats. Um, and I know what my minimum is. I see coaches and teachers out there all the time. Um, and, you know, they're not valuing themselves. You know, they're, um, you know, not working um, smarter. They're working harder. And and that is something we have to do and consider, right? Is like knowing again what the market calls for, but also what our worth is. So the message is, yes, you can make six figures, even without a degree. Going back, I mentioned that I tried to go to school. I became a career student for over eight years, still paying for loans, um, and I didn't get my degree. And for a long time, I believed that it was necessary um, and then when I realized it wasn't as necessary, even for what I did, because, you know, going back to some of the other big tech companies that I'd worked for, degrees were a must, but I led in with my confidence. I knew what my worth was and, and it came across not only in my experience, but when they got to meet with me. And so I'm very grateful for the career that I had. I'm really thankful for where I'm at now and it's just the beginning. So thank you for being here. So if you've stuck around this long, be sure to drop a comment. Let me know um, what your thoughts are. And um, I will definitely be seeing you soon. Uh, if you haven't yet, hit the thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. Turn on the notifications. And you will see me next time. Bye.